you can see, but the folks who are going to sit in the back can't quite yet. All right. Here's Johnny. Good evening. Okay, you can do a little better than that. I know it's the middle of a busy week. Good evening. Thank you. And welcome to our last mid midweek Lenten service. Uh, we'll talk about what's coming next week, uh, but that's for the end of our time together. And so I'm glad to see you all here to see, well, okay, how will we pray this week? Um, all right, no stations set up. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you uh, if you were looking for a kind of get up and get around. Our, our different way of praying this week is not so much a different uh, way of praying physically, but a different focus. And we'll get to that here in just a little bit. I don't know about you, but I can use in the middle of this week a moment to breathe, to set aside all those other things that are going on or for me will be happening, right, that my brain wants to go to. And so taking the time to be in the here and now in this time and place with these people, with this word from God. And so one of the ways in which we settle ourselves so that we can better do that is we do what? Breathe. We breathe. And as we breathe, I invite you to get settled into your space. Maybe put your feet on the floor, kind of get yourself comfortable. Let some of the tension come out. Leave your body as you exhale. So you'll inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Remember, we exhale longer than we inhale. That's part of what triggers that physical reaction. As you do, just kind of sink into this time and place, kind of blow out all of those things that are distracting you so that after we do this three times, we can begin our worship together. And so we breathe in and out. We breathe in and out. We breathe in the life-giving breath of the Holy Spirit. We breathe out all those things that take breath from us. And we begin. to join me. Breath of God, breath of life. Too often we are without breath, squeezed by sorrow, worry, regret, time. Fill us with your life-giving breath.
Holy Spirit, comforter, stirrer of our lives. Give us this night what we need, comfort for our pain, a presence in our loneliness, a stirring into new life for where we are stagnant. light of your Christ. Show us the truth of ourselves. Illumine our path. Forgive us. God of peace, we yearn for you with a desire so deep we cannot name it. Hear our cry. Come to your people. is here. Let us pray. O Lord, you spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. Teach us to silence our own hearts and minds, that we may listen for the movement of your Holy Spirit and feel your presence in the depths of our being. Amen. As I said, this week is not about how we pray, but more what we pray for. If you've been reading along, you know that I have picked up something from the previous week's practices. This will give you a little clue of what our focus will be. We're reading from Matthew 5, beginning with the 43rd verse. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Let me amplify that text again just a little bit. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate, detest, literally love less your enemy, those who are openly hostile to you, intent on inflicting you harm. But I say to you, Jesus says, love your enemy. 
love, agape, your enemies, the same love that God shows to us, your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you, who hunt you down. Why? So that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. As Michael Reinhardt points out, this is a hard teaching. It is the way of the world to love in a self-sacrificial way our neighbor, those nearest to you, those you love. It is hard to love less. Sorry, at what we... Let me back this up. It's the way of the world. Take two. It is the way of the world to love in a self-sacrificial way your neighbor, right? Those nearest to you. And to love less, to hate those intent on inflicting harm on you. But Jesus comes along and he says, no, we should love in a self-sacrificial way those people intent on inflicting us harm, to pray for those who hunt us down to make our life miserable. That is what children of the Heavenly Father do. This is a characteristic of what it means to hallow, to make holy God's name. I would also agree with Michael Reinhardt that this does not mean allowing abusers to continue to abuse or that there are no consequences for actions that harm. God's desire is that we as human beings created in the image of God would be reconciled with one another to be brought together as one. And when we fight, when we hurt one another, when we sin against each other, that breaks this basic relationship that exists between us. God's desire is to heal that break, that we would reconcile with one another. Now, in my way of thinking, reconciliation is the product when confession, admitting wrongdoing, meets forgiveness, release from retribution. Forgiveness comes from the wronged party. It's refraining from vengeance on the one who wronged you for both your sake and that of your enemy. It is not about consequences of their actions per se. That may still be forthcoming. It is about the relationship between you and the one who has wronged you as well as your relationship between you and God. Confession comes from the one who has wronged another. It does not mean that there will be no consequences even if that confession is accepted. It is about the relationship between you and the one you have wronged as well as you and God. Praying for your enemies is not easy. It takes practice. It does not mean pretending that the offense didn't happen What it means is freeing yourself from the burden of carrying that grudge, that hate, that offense with you. As Reinhardt puts it, it is releasing the past in order to embrace a new tomorrow. Praying for your enemy might mean praying for the strength to forgive. It might mean praying for their conversion from hatred to love. 
It means acknowledging how you feel even as you pray, trusting that God will act for what is best for everyone. It might sound a bit like a prayer I read yesterday that God would not harden Putin's heart, but soften it. That peace might prevail. And so tonight, I will invite you to pray for your enemies. Who are your enemies? Who are those you believe are intent on inflicting you harm? Or those who have harmed you? Start a list. If you've got something to write with or your phone, start a list. Let's start with those far from home. Other countries, people, those not in our state, those who are not closest to us. How might we pray for those on this list? Reinhardt suggests that even a prayer help them see the errors of their ways is a start. So I will invite you to take a few moments. And who are those other countries, other people, people not physically close to us, who you perceive as enemy. List those and take a moment to go through and what might you be able to pray for them. Take just a few moments and then I'll call us back. Another category that we might pray for are those enemies who are closer to home. Who has hurt you? Or someone you love? Who do you need to forgive? Even if it's just to get past the hurt. I invite you to write those down, as difficult as that may be. Sometimes the act of naming, writing, speaking, can be a beginning. To just name a thing gives us an opportunity to be free from it, as painful as it can be. So I invite you to take just a few moments now to who are those closest to either mentally or physically write this down and how might you begin to pray for these enemies who are closest.
prayer for our enemies takes courage and it takes faith. But what might God do in you and in them through a discipline of praying for our enemies on a regular basis? How might our hearts and our lives be changed? How might our world be changed? Paul writes in Romans 12, Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, Feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will keep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Let us pray. These are difficult words, Lord. Give us the strength to hear them, the courage to live them, the words to speak. And where we fall short, Show us the grace we so desperately need. Amen. We continue with our evening hymn.
sing through our refrain, O Lord, hear my prayer, and then that will be our response to each of the petitions. Gracious God, with thanksgiving for life-giving rain, for a warming earth that will bear fruit to feed us all, for full bellies, for family close by us, for shoes on our feet and a roof over our heads, for peace in our land, for steadfast love and faithfulness, we pray. filled with sin that wars against one another, for our leaders at all levels who make difficult choices, for refugees and those caught in war zones, for our enemies, that their hearts might be turned and we might recognize your image in one another, we pray. those in need of your healing who we hold in our hearts, for all who struggle with mental illness, for those whose scars and wounds are visible, for those whose scars and wounds are hidden, for those who mourn, we pray. peace in our nation, for peace in our homes, for peace in our lives. We pray. give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. 
Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. An invitation to join us for Holy Week. You'll hear more from me. Uh, I, I may put out, at least in video form, my pastor's thoughts for next week early, because it's on this. An invitation to join us for Palm Sunday as we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. We will wave our palms. They came today. We've got them in hand, so we will process in. And then uh, there's a group that will be rehearsing right after this uh, so that you will hear in these many voices the passion narrative from the Gospel of Luke. That will be our text and our sermon this week. And then we will walk through the week with Jesus. We will post every day scripture texts from literally that day of the week for Jesus. What he was doing on that day. I love Holy Week because we live both in this world and that. We walk our life and with Jesus. It's one of those odd overlaying times. We will gather on Monday, Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Nothing on Wednesday next week, but 7 o'clock Monday, Thursday. We'll hear the story of Jesus at the Last Supper as he washes the feet of his disciples and gives them the mandatum, the command, to love one another in the same way that I have loved you. And then we will gather with the disciples as well to share in that last meal. Cup and bread, body and blood of Jesus. And then sit and listen to the psalm that Jesus quotes from the cross as this altar and chancel area are stripped in the same way that Christ will be stripped before his trial, before he is beaten and crucified. We will leave that night with no dismissal, still in worship to assemble again on Good Friday, 7 o'clock, gathered in silence to hear John's passion narrative to pray for the world, to ponder the ways in which we continue to participate in the same way as those who crucified our Christ and to meditate on the cross. And then Saturday, a day of waiting like the women do before that great getting up day of Easter, when something that lies in this tomb that is the chest will break forth again and we blow the roof off the joint at 8 and 10.30. I invite you to join us for that journey. It is so powerful when you can take the fullness of it. So, Please do so. Thanks to everyone who has made our soup supper so wonderful uh, this uh, at Lenten season. Uh, thanks to all of you who have been so attentive and provided your voices when mine has failed. Oh, it has been so wonderful being up here. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can. And so that has been a blessing to me, I know. And now I invite you to receive this blessing. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we close. Night has fallen. Trust.
has fallen. Go now in peace, for nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God.